and just invite them to church. Let them know we're here. Uh, if they've got any, you know, needs through this, uh, you know, this pandemic that we're dealing with, whether it be taking some groceries, whatever, church, that's what we're here for is uh, just to show God's love. So I'm proud of them for doing that. Our youth group's kind of chipped in on that a little bit. They've designed youth group, or, uh, bookmarks to go along with those flyers out, and I know the kids got real excited about doing those, and uh, they've been enjoying their Sunday school lessons in the morning. So thank uh, Sister Whitney for doing those and putting the time in for that. It's been really good. Uh, so a few more prayer requests. We got uh, Sister Jo, please remember her as she's continuing to battle the shingles. I know she's had some good days and some bad days this past week. Uh, medicine's gonna help out. It's more of a long-term fix medicine than a short-term. Uh, let's remember uh, Brother Bill and Sister Francis over here next door. They're continuing to struggle. I think she fell again this week. So she's continuing to, uh, again, have those good days and bad days. But those bad days can be pretty bad sometimes. So let's reach out to them. I don't think they're able to listen in on the services or anything. So uh, if the Lord leads you, send them a card, call them up, just talk to them, whatever the uh, Lord leads you to do, that'd be good. Uh, Sister Jean, let's remember her. I think she also was instructed uh, this week by her significant other to, uh, to to not be moving around as much and to stop trying to move around. Her dizziness is still uh, has not been that great. So she fell, I think, or almost fell uh, one time this past week. Uh, so let's pray for Brother Leroy and Sister Jean. Uh, Sister Letha, I think she's doing better. She got to get out this morning, so continue to pray for her that her health continues to improve. I brought up uh, Sister uh, Donna Bartley, a friend of mine that I work with, uh, who's getting ready to have some, having some teeth trouble, so let's pray for her. And I just pray that, you know, there's nothing too small or nothing too big when it comes to prayer. We need to understand that. And sometimes we need some of these smaller things within our grasp to be able to help build our faith like we talked about this morning. So I'm looking for a, a praise report from Donna that somehow, some way, uh, God just took a lot of that pain away from her and everything went really well with the surgery she's going to have to have. Uh, Sister Martha Thomas, if y'all could remember her, she's also somebody that I know. Uh, it's been at NHC. She had to have open heart surgery the other night. She's doing great. Uh, so hopefully she'll get to come back home, but please continue to pray for her. Things are looking pretty rough for a little while. Uh, I met a I met a guy this week who had the uh, coronavirus, and uh, at one point in time he was in the hospital here at TJ with double pneumonia, dealing with this uh, COVID nineteen. And uh, I'm proud to say that he is on his way to recovery. He got to go back home. And so that was a, a praise report, and uh, he uh, was giving glory to God for it. So I, I appreciate that, and no doubt God's helped him to get through that. I could tell that he had. Uh, a couple more, uh, brother, brother Ivan Craddock's family. I mentioned them this morning. I think I actually said Brother Ivan Sewell this morning. I think I was had in the back of my mind Brother Nathan Sewell, who also went to church there and passed away a couple years ago, a friend of mine. But Brother Ivan Craddock and his family uh, continue to remember them. He died unexpectedly a couple days ago with a heart attack. And uh, a praise report, let's end it on a good note, Brother, our sister Debbie Norris, uh, you know, got some good news about her cancer. She's still gonna have to go through a few things, but uh, was reported cancer free. So we can't just focus on all the prayers sometimes. We gotta think about the praise reports also because we can get burdened down with all the prayers and all the negative things that we need to also look for how God answers those prayers. That's just as important as the prayer report. So remember all those things and uh, so we'll be trying to keep that up to date on Facebook. Uh, I think that's all I've got in terms of announcements. If you want to be getting your Bibles out with me, I'm going to be preaching from Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. That's kind of a, a tough one to find, but it's uh, right before Isaiah and right after Proverbs. So in that area there, it's a small small book of the Bible. 
with some good stuff in it. Appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, giving some time for the Lord. I hope He's got something for you tonight. I know with a without a shadow of a doubt, He's got something for somebody, or He wouldn't have me up here preaching. So there's His word never goes out and returns void. It's going to help somebody. I don't always get to see who that is. It's always nice to know when it does help somebody. That gives me encouragement and helps us to see how God's at work. So I appreciate some of the comments and stuff that people have been leaving on the Facebook videos. Get to go back and look at those sometimes and, and see those. And that helps to know that people's listening and get some help from it. We're going to start here in chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes. And it says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for this message that you put on my heart tonight. And Father, I just pray that it goes out in a way that is pleasing to you. A way that you've designed, Lord. You've looked down on this day. You've looked into somebody's heart. And Father, you're wanting to connect the dots with your word and help somebody with something they've got going on in their life. I'm honored to be able to be a part of that. And Lord, I just know that there's no good that can come out of me if it doesn't come from you. We learned and talked about that this morning. Your power is unlimited. And Father, if we could just tap into a little bit of it tonight to be able to get some peace, to be able to get some comfort, to be able to get some help, Lord, we would thank you so much for it. So Lord, please help us tonight as we look to your word. Please send the Holy Spirit, Lord, to speak through your word, to speak through the camera, to speak through the electrical lines and wherever it has to go, across the TV, into the phone, into the hears, into the heart of somebody that's listening to be able to give them some help. Or there is no limit to the ways that you can do your work. So, Father, I pray that you just use us however you want to use us tonight. We thank you, Father. We remember all those that the prayer request, Father, went out for. Help us not just to say them as names, but help us to be able to engrave them into our hearts and remember them and pray for them and follow up with them and care about them and love them, Lord, and ask you for their help. Father, so we can turn those prayers into praise reports. I look forward to seeing how you do that in this community. I look forward to seeing how you work through this church to do good in this community. Lord, that can only be done if we're willing servants for you. And I pray that that's what we do. I pray that that's what I am tonight, Lord, and that you can use me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> so we read here of time. Time. Time is a very interesting thing. It's something that our whole lives and through decades and ever since the beginning of time, we've been trying to wrap our hands around and grasp time. We've tried to control time. We've tried to uh, manipulate it. We've tried to understand it. And no doubt all of us would be able to, as we read down through these things, we, we'd like to know, and it would be great if we could in our, get to a point in our life where we could tell time, where we could know when the time is right for things, where we could just be able to know when it's time to do something, when it's time to, but see, there's a lot of things that we read here that reality tells us that we can't ever get to the point of understanding. 
And the reality is, is we can't tell time. Time ends up telling us. And that's a harsh reality because it seems like we spend our whole lives trying to get to the point of where we're controlling time and we're telling time. Not to the point of just knowing what time it is, but we actually try to manipulate that time and to turn it into what we want it to be. But then reality hits. At some point in our life, each of us have already experienced that point in time where we realize that we're not in control of time. I got to see that just a couple of days ago when a good friend of mine, Brother Ivan Craddock, passed away at his home having a heart attack, 43 years old. No doubt in my mind, no doubt in his mind, he thought he had much more time to work with. He was a preacher. He preached at a lot of uh, nursing homes around here. And he'd just been called, I think, back in 2016 and was trying to live for the Lord and was a man that, if I can think anything about him, he was a man that he was not afraid to tell anybody about Jesus. He was not afraid to let somebody know about Jesus. He wasn't afraid to jump into a, a situation. He didn't care what you thought about it. He was going to let you know what he thought about it. And I, I, I could take, I wish I could take a piece of that. And I am taking a piece of that because his life will forever be remembered in my life. And I hope to be that bold as Ivan was. But see, time took Ivan before his time, before what I would have considered his time. No doubt many people are watching this, you read down through here, and one of these probably stuck out to you. Whether it's a you know, we see the very beginning, a time to be born and a time to die. We'd all like to know when that time is we're going to die, wouldn't we? We'd like to know how much time we've got to work with. Because a lot, to be honest with you, we keep telling ourselves, I've got time to, to grow in the Lord. I've got time to be who the Lord wants me to be. I've got more time to be able to be a better person for my family. I've got more time to be a better Christian. I've got more time to spend to say something to that person that needs me to say something. I know that they don't know the Lord. We think we have time, but the reality is, is we don't know how much time we have. We're not in control of time, but we are in control of how we react to those times in life when they come. We don't know when all these things are going to happen, but when they do come, we can react and we can hope that we respond to those things in life the right way. And that's our job. We can't, we're not in charge of time, but we are in charge of how we react to time. So whatever it is that's in your life that you don't understand, that you don't, that you'd like to know more about, and you'd like to be able to understand whatever it is that you're dealing with, that's not in your control to understand when that you're going to get over that sickness, when you're going to be able to get that prayer answered. That's not in your control. What is in your control is that you keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Is that you don't give up. That you keep trying to see what it is that God wants you to see through all these situations. So we don't control time, but we control our reactions to our time. There's so many things within this that has been preached on so many times with so many different directions that we could go. But... There's a certain way that God has kind of shown this to me a little bit this morning that it seems like we're trying to tell time, but we can't tell time. We cannot tell time. As much as we want to tell time in this world, I can't tell you when this coronavirus is going to be over with. I would love to be able to tell you that. No doubt there's a lot of people, you get on Facebook and there's a lot of people that seem like they've got it all figured out. There's times where I seem like I've got it figured out. In my weak moments, I think that we're to this point in it and it's all going to be over with. But the reality is, is I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. Our governor doesn't know. Our president doesn't know. Nobody knows because we're not in charge of telling time. All we're in charge of is reacting to time. And there's peace in that. You should find peace in that. In knowing that God never expects you to know everything. He doesn't expect you to be able to tell everybody when this is going to be over with. But he does expect you to react to all these things the right way. And that's what our job is as Christians. That's what we should be doing is looking to God's word to see how we should be reacting to these things. Whatever it is 
in God's way. So if we can't tell time, as much as we'd like to tell time what to do, if we can't tell time, maybe we can know the right time. Maybe we can know when the time comes that we're at that point where we should be doing something a certain way. Maybe we should get to that point in life where we can know the right time to do something. Well, we find in Scripture that that's not always as easy as we'd like to think it is either. Turn with me to Esther chapter 4 and 14. And we're looking to look at another time where there was somebody, Esther, was trying to find that answer out herself. She was trying to understand and she was trying to know the right time. She was trying to figure out, is this the right time? What should I do? I want to know. We want to know it's the right time so many times. And I'll read you the verse and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more to you. But it says, uh, this is Mordecai speaking to Esther. Mordecai is her cousin. And Esther's coming at a time in, in history where things were, this was a big time. She was responsible and God was putting on her the potential of being able to save the Jews from death. And this is a turning point in humanity. A turning point, if we follow it all the way through, that actually would lead us to the birth of Jesus Christ. But we probably won't get into all that. But in verse 14 it says, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement of deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And listen to this part. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? You remember this scripture because this is a powerful scripture that we come back to many times. And where Esther was being, she was being encouraged by Mordecai because Esther was at a point in her life where she didn't know. She didn't know what the right thing to do was. She didn't know the time. And no doubt she was trying, she was torn to pieces through this, trying to figure out what the right thing was. But the truth and the reality is, is she didn't know what God's will was at this point in time of her life. And she was trying to figure that out. So the question is, is can you know what God's will is in your life? Is it, should it always be crystal clear whatever God's will is? for a situation or for whatever it is that you've got going on. We can't tell time, but can we know the time? And what we see in this is it's not really that easy. A lot of times we don't know God's will. A lot of times we don't know what to do. And we're no doubt you've been in this situation before where you're, you're trying to figure out what God's will is and you just don't know. You've got to move forward. You've got to move one of two directions, but you don't know which way to go. And that's the point that Esther was right here. See, Esther was set up by God a long time ago when she was just a child for this purpose. She didn't know that. Hindsight's 2020. We can look at that. We can see that clearly. But she was at a point where she didn't know what God's purpose was for her. God gave her a gift as a child, and she grew with that gift. It was a gift of beauty. It was a gift of people liking her. She didn't understand what that gift was going to be used for, but God knew the whole time how he was going to use that gift for this time. But once again, she didn't have the privilege of being able to see the future, just like we can't see the future. So she was in a moment where she had to trust in God. She had to have faith. She had to decide... Was this God's will or was this man's will? So what I see here is that in order for us to know what God's will is, we've got to be able to get our will out of the way. We've got to be able to get what we think we know out of our minds so we can see, let God show us what is real and what we really should know. And here's what I mean by that. In verse 11, when she was trying to decide this, she had just come through and what Mordecai was asking her to do was to be able to petition to the Persian king to be able to let the Jews go, to deliver the people. We're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of people that was getting ready to die, that was getting ready to be put to death if Esther didn't step in and do what she was supposed to do. The lineage of David, which ultimately led to the lineage of Jesus Christ being born, all comes back to this moment. 
She had no clue that she was living in such an important moment. She had no clue that her gift, whatever it was that God gave her, which was the gift of beauty, was going to be used for this purpose. So we see that all she was looking at in this moment, she was saying, well, you're telling me, Mordecai, what, what I, who knows if I was made for this moment, but let me tell you what I do know is what she was saying. She's saying over here in verse 11, she's saying, all the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king, into the inner court, who is not called, this is one law of his to put him to death. So what she's saying right here is she's saying, I don't know if this is God's will or not, but I do know that if I go talk to the king without him inviting me to come talk to him, I'm going to be put to death. See, this is a life or death situation for me. You're not just asking me to sing a song for the Lord. You're not just asking me to stand up in front of people and preach. This was a big deal. She was putting her life on the line. See, a lot of things that God calls you to do, you're going to feel like your life is being put on the line. And it is being put on the line because in order for you to submit to God's will sometimes, your old ways, your old person, who you think you are, who you want to be, people, how they see you to be is now going to be something totally different. He's asking you to change your life. He's asking you to give your life to him. In these big moments of life, when you're trying to figure out what to know to do, what you've got to do is you've got to let go of what you think you know. So you've already made up your mind on whatever it is that God's calling you to do, whatever it is that God is wanting you to do. I don't know who's listening to this. I don't know what the message, who this message is going out to, but no doubt you've already made up your mind of how this is going to play out. Well, you're going to have to let go of that. See, Esther had to let go of the thought. She said, I do know that if I go in and talk to him, I'm going to be put to death. She had to let go of what man says and what her own mind says, how this was going to play out. You've got to let go of that in order to have the courage to do what God wants you to do. And she did that in this moment. She was able to let go of her fear. She was able to let go and put her life on the line. She was able to let go and have faith in something that didn't look like there was any way that it could possibly turn out that way. And she had to have faith in what God was telling her to do. See, God will always let himself be known in letting you know what it is he wants you to do. I told you that it's hard to know time. Well, it is hard to know time. But God will let you know time. But it's not easy to do. It's not easy to do. Here's how you know, here's how you can know time. Here's how you can know if it's God's will for you to be doing something or not. This is pretty simple. We make it very complicated, but this is very simple. Is, is the point, once you get to the point in your life where whatever it is that you're trying to decide that he's calling you to do, is this what it is that you're trying to figure out? Is it going to bring glory to God's name? Is it going to, can you look back and you can, can you see how God has prepared you for this moment? Can you see that God's hand has been in it up to this point? See, Esther, if she was just looking with her own mindset, she could really, she could have talked to herself into thinking that, well, I'm the one that got myself to this point. I am the king's queen now because of my beauty, because I was nice to people, because people liked me. I did this on my own. I am a Jew also, which is unique because she's trying to save all the Jews. And she was a Jew herself. And so she really should have been put to death also. So she shouldn't even have been there in the first place. God's the one that put her there for this purpose. So what we see here is that's one way you can know. If you can look back and you can see God's hand in getting you to the point where you're at. And if you can see that whatever it is that you're being called to do, is it the right thing to do? Is it going to bring glory to God's name? Then the odds are that he's probably called you for this purpose. He's called you to this point. But guess what? You're not going to know. I just told you that you are going to know. You are going to know because you can look back and see the evidence of it. But most of the time, just like in Esther's, in Esther's place right here, 
she didn't have full certainty that this is what God wanted her to do. She had to make a decision. Why is it that we think that sometimes that when we're having to deal with something big in life that God owes it to us to give us an answer without a shadow of doubt? Why do we think that all of a sudden, even though looking back at our whole life, every good thing that we've ever done has required faith? Why is it now all of a sudden when we have a big moment of life, we think that faith is not going to be required anymore? We think that God is going to give us some sign that is just unexplainable, something that we just cannot dispute. How many different, no doubt, he's probably gave you many signs, but it's not the sign you're looking for because then that wouldn't require faith, would it? So what he's given her is he's given her the ability to be able to make this decision and have the faith. And we know that if what, once she made this decision, if we read on a little bit farther, in verse 15 it says, Then Esther bade them return to Mordecai this answer. She made an answer. Nowhere in that, see, she just went from a question to an answer. Mordecai says, And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Who knows? But then she got an answer. She said, Go gather together all the Jews that are present, and shoot shot and fast for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day, I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so I will go unto the king, which is not according to the law, even though I know that I should die for this, I'm going to do it anyways, and if I perish, I perish. See, she didn't know that God was going to deliver her in this moment, yet she did it anyways. That is faith. What sometimes God gives you something to do and you don't know if it's the right answer or not. And just like with her, you're going to have to step out on faith. Not knowing if she was going to die or not, she did it. But she did it with God's help. Notice that she just didn't step into it on her own, but she asked people to pray. She asked people to fast. She asked people to really dig deep and try to find God's will and ask for God's will. Just like we talked about this morning you don't just step in front of things in life and try to do it on your own because you know that God wants you to do it. You better get prepared for it. You better unleash a little bit more of that power from God through prayer because you're going to need it. You better prepare your heart through God's word and through prayer. You can't just step into it on your own or you will fail. I've seen this happen time and time and time again. People that are recovered from drugs and alcohol. They get to this point where they see and God has called them. He says, it is time for you to let go of this. It's time for you to straighten up. It's time for you to give your life to me and stop wasting it with all these drugs and without all these Satan's devices. And so they say, okay, I hear the voice. I know it's the right thing to do. And just like Esther, they said, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Now, here's my answer. But they skipped this part that she didn't skip. See, a lot of people just go straight to, okay, I'm going to do it. And then they just stop. And they don't try to get God's help to help them through whatever he's called you to do. That's the most important step in all of this that I see is that not only did she do it, but she did it knowing that she was going to have to have God's help to do it. Any drug addict, any person that's recovering from alcohol, any person that's felt that tug of knowing that it's not right is going to try to overcome that, you can do it with God's help, but you will fail if you try to do it on your own. Every time you're going to have to have some kind of support system that's going to help you through it. I don't care how strong you are, you will fail if you don't ask for God's help in those deep things in your life. So whatever it is, I don't know what it is that it is for you, but knowing the time is not always as easy as we like to think. We can't tell time. We can't know the time. So what is it about time that we can have a comfort with? We can't tell it what to do, and we can't know exactly when it is. I'm going to tell you that you can still be on time every time in your life. Even though you can't tell time and you can't know for sure when the right time is. And we find that, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And we find some more familiar verses here. And I'm going to read a few of them here. I'm going to, I'm going to start 
in verse 32, and then I'll back up and tell you what's going on here. It says, For after all these things do Gentiles seek, and all these things that they're talking about is trying to, trying to have answers in life. This is speaking to you that has all the anxieties in life. It's trying to figure it all out. The one that's trying to tell time what to do. The one that's trying to know the right answer for every single thing before you do it. God is speaking to you right here because that's what he's talking to. These people are trying to know the times. They're trying to know the answer. They're trying to do it without faith. And it says, for your heavenly father knoweth, there you go. Now you know who knows things, that ye have need of all these things. All these things that you're worried about. All these things that you don't understand. All these things that drive you crazy. All these things that you have questions to. When's this going to be over with? When am I going to get back to my normal life? When am I going to stop struggling with this? When is this going to finally come to light? When is my prayer going to be answered? Verse 33 says... But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So if you can't tell time, and you can't know the time, he's telling you right here, you can still be on time, as long as you're living in the now. He doesn't want you to live in the past. Because, see, Satan works in the past. He doesn't want you to live in the future. Because Satan will worry you to death about the future. You try to look at into the future and he will tear you to pieces trying to figure out and know the time and to be able to tell the time and to be able to understand the times and be able to know exactly how everything's going to work out. But in this simple verse, he's telling you how you can still please him without knowing everything. And that is to act in the moment. Do whatever it is he's telling you to do right now. What today? Worry about today. Don't worry about all the tomorrows. Don't worry about all the past and keep dragging that with you. But focus right now in the today. And here's why. Because it says right here, God the Heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Why worry about all the things in the past and why worry about all the things in the future? God knows how all those are going to work out. You don't. You don't even know if you're going to have a future. My brother Ivan and brother Nathan Sewell, both of them about my age, they both were preachers. That connects with me. Both of them thought they was going to have a future. They thought that they was going to get to become the preacher that they wanted to be. They look out, no doubt, like me, and I see many men of God that I respect, that I would love to be like, that I can feel God's presence through, that I see has done these great things. And I'd like to think that someday I can get to the point where they're at. But you know what? God's showing me that I can't worry about that. I can't worry about being like them and doing all those things in the future because I may not even have tomorrow. I may not even make it home tonight. That shows me that I've got to work in the now. This may be my last sermon. This may be tomorrow, maybe my last time that I ever get the chance to talk to somebody about the Lord. Whatever, we should let that connect with us. We should let that sink in that we don't that's why we can't worry about tomorrow and yesterday because we don't we're not in control of those things but i am in control of right now god has given me right now he's given me this message to give to somebody i didn't have to get up here but i want to be obedient to him i want to share his word i want to do what he wants me to do right now because this might be the last now that i ever get We've got to understand that. I can't, I can't tell the time. I can't tell the time. But thanks to God, I can tell you about the time. I've got that. I can't tell you all these different things that's going to happen, but I can tell you about a time when I met Jesus Christ for myself. I can tell you about a time when he come to me as a 12-year-old boy and he took away that peace that I had of thinking that I was right with him. He took that away from me. I can tell you how that felt. 
I know that for a fact. That's something that God gave me that nobody can dispute. It's in my heart. So I can tell you about that time. I can tell you I know how that felt. I know about that time. And I can tell you that I know because I acted on that moment. In that moment, that now moment, when Jesus come down and he took that piece away from me, and I wanted that piece back, and I knew I wasn't right, and through the gospel I knew how to get that piece back, I acted in that moment, in the now, then, and then he gave me something that I could know about. See, a lot of times people, they're sitting there telling, right, there's people watching this, I guarantee you right now, that their heart is not right with the Lord. But you think that you have the ability to tell time. You think that you've got tomorrow. You think that you've got next week. You think that you've got time to turn into whoever it is that God wants you to be. You know you can be more. And you think that you're going to be more someday. But you're fooling yourself by thinking that you can tell time. You think that you can know time. You can't know time. You can't tell time. That's why you've got to act in the now. You've got to be who God wants you to be right now. That's the message that he's given us tonight. That's what he's wanting us to understand. How important a message is that? No doubt that would have been a very important message from my brother, Brother Ivan, about a week ago. If he would have known that he only had a couple more days to live, how would that have changed his life? How would that have changed his last few days? That's what we need to let sink in. It's not fair. It's not right. I think of my other brother, Nathan Sewell. Me and him talked youth group together at Bethel Baptist. I looked up to him. He was a man on fire for the Lord. He had a passion for the Lord. He would witness to people. He wouldn't afraid. He had even witnessed to somebody at Barnes and Noble the day that he died in a car wreck coming home from Bowling Green. He was so much better man than I was. Why did God choose to take him home? I don't know. I don't know the times. But I know I'm still here. I know what God's done for me. And I know that he's called me to do more for him. He's called me to an understanding. Ignorance is bliss. Now that I know what I know in this Bible, I can't not tell people about it. Now that I know what I know in my heart, I cannot not go out there and share God's word with people. There's so many people out there that they don't have to live with this burden that I'm living with because they don't know. Nobody's ever shared the gospel with them. They're living in an ignorant world. And they're not, they don't see this as clearly as I see it. But you know what? Ignorance is bliss in this world, but it's not going to be an excuse for the next. Everybody's going to get a chance. Now, will they get one chance? Will they get two chances? Will they get three chances? Will they get four chances? Well, that's up to me and you. See, we're God's power. Like we talked about this morning, it's up to me and you how much we want to pray for them. It's up to me and you how much we're willing to give up of ourselves to give them more opportunity. It's up to me and you to give them that opportunity. So how many chances of opportunity do they get? That's up to me and you. That's a burden that we must carry as Christians. But we don't have to carry it alone. Just like Esther and you may feel that dread, just a small touch of what she felt, the feeling like, I can't do this. I know that this is not what I want my life to be. I'd rather have fun. I'd rather just enjoy things. I'd rather just enjoy life. Well, you can still enjoy life. Solomon wrote, and I'm, I'm closing, but in the very beginning of this, the first scripture I read to you, Solomon was the one that wrote that in Ecclesiastes. One of the wisest men the Bible tells us that ever lived. And even he couldn't tell the time. He didn't know the time. Only God knows the time. That's what he was trying to tell us. But here's what he did know. He said, I can't, I can't discern time, but I do know that God wants us to enjoy life. I know that God doesn't want us just to carry that dread and that burden, but he's also given us the gift of life to be able to enjoy. 
You should not just feel a burden of being a Christian. It is a privilege to be a Christian. It is a privilege to be able to get up here and know what I know. It's a privilege for you to be able to go out with the peace that you have because that's something the lost world does not have. You should be wearing that peace. You should be wearing that excitement. You should be wearing that joy. That's going to be what's going to draw the lost into you. Not you cramming God's word down their throat. Not you laying that dread on them of hell. God will take care of that. But what's going to win them over is you enjoying life. Enjoying the life that God gives you. Enjoying not having to know everything. Enjoying not having the same anxieties that the world has, but having a peace about you, a peace in life. A peace that if you were to die tomorrow, that that's okay. A peace that you don't have all the answers. A peace that you don't know when this coronavirus is going to end. But you know that you can see that God's doing good things through it right now, and God's going to get rid of it when he wants to get rid of it. We're going to pray for it, because that's what he's called us to do. But God's in control of time. We're not. So stop pretending like you are. We need to let that sink into our hearts. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for this message. I feel in my heart that somebody out there needed to hear this tonight as I needed to hear this tonight. Lord, help us just to live in that peace that you give us. Not not bearing that burden of anxiety, Lord, that the world has, but that peace that you give us. Of not having to know everything, Lord, but we know enough. We know that you're with us. We know that when we lay our head down here, Father, that we're going to wake up in a much better place. We don't have to have all the answers, Lord. We just have to live in the now. We have to have today's answers. We have to know what you want us to do today. And Lord, you told us that, but right here in these verses is to seek your kingdom and your righteousness, Father, and all these other things will come to be. So Father, help us to seek you first, to put you first in our lives, to do the right thing, to do what you've called us to do through your word, to share your love, to love you and to love our neighbor. And Father, if we do these things, then we can enjoy this life and we'll definitely enjoy the next life. Thank you for a good day, Father, in your word. I hope that it's connected with somebody out there, Lord. And I'm just looking for souls to be saved. Let us not forget, Lord, that's what we're here for, is to grow your kingdom. Touch somebody's heart that's listening tonight. Touch somebody's heart and lead them to salvation. Use me. Use someone else in this church. Use our actions, Lord. Help us to realize how important it will work that we are called to do. We thank you for everything. Please be with us this week as we continue to be in prayer, looking for your power. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. And, uh, invite you to tune in. We'll be doing a Wednesday uh, Bible study on Wednesday that we'll put on Facebook, and then we'll see you again Sunday. Lord willing. I don't know the time, right? You don't either. Thank y'all for joining in. Appreciate it.